Hi everyone, welcome to the Photo Book Weekend presented by the Ballarat International Photo Biennale. My name is Lindsay and I'm the producer of the Photo Book Weekend. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Boon Wurrung and Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of Melbourne, where I live and work, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. As well as a warm welcome to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today and in the future who are watching a recording of this talk. We would also like to acknowledge the BNR takes place in the land of the Wadawurrung and Jaja Wurrung people and pay our respect to their elders past, present and emerging. The BNR would like to thank our lead partners, Spices, Bauhaus, Hannah Mule, and our major government partners, the City of Ballarat, Creative Victoria, Visit Victoria, and the Australian Government Through the Rise Fund for their ongoing support of the BNR. Today, we welcome the audience to ask questions, which you can do at any time during the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen, or the chat function. Um, and I would now like to welcome our guest speakers, Anne Davies, Stuart Murdoch, Mike Reed, Suzanne Phoenix, and William Stewart, who are all part of the Melbourne Photo Book Collective. The Melbourne Photo Book Collective is a group of artists and photographers based in and around Melbourne. Their collaboration is founded on a shared interest in making and talking about photo books. They participate in art and photo book events where they sell their work and talk to others about making and reading photo books. So I'll just introduce each of our speakers today by just reading a bit about them in their bio. Anne Davies, a photographic artist, has a particular interest in photo books that push the boundaries in a pursuit of a rich story. Her practice includes creating small, unique, handmade photo books as well as limited edition series. Playing with the concertina structure in her recent, in her recent Fence series has given her an opportunity to work with the idea in a very intimate way. Stuart Murdoch explores chance, time and the quotidian as he wanders the urban edges of Melbourne looking to siphon off the unusual, odd or quirky. As a visual artist, he creates for a variety of mediums, some online and uh, some online, others more visceral and tactile. He lives with his wife and two Devon Rex kittens in Melbourne's inner west suburb of Sunshine. Having a love of all that is creative, Mike Reed learnt film editing and for more than 33 years managed his own post business, MRPPP. Editing taught Mike to see the more special moments, the quirky, the double meaning, juxtaposed oddities of life, and his rule number one is always take your camera. Suzanne Phoenix uh, is a Melbourne photographer, artist, zine, and bookmaker. Photos punctuate her, punct punctuate her life through portraits, performance, music, the street, and daily life. Suzanne has self-published six books during the 2021 lockdowns, including a large-scale collaborative series with artists in Victoria and the community of the Upper Yarra Valley. William Stewart has spent the last few years exploring the world, using his camera to capture images. Finding wonder and delight in nature, human history and landscapes, he weaves narratives combining words and images to create and share these journeys of discovery. Coming from a background in science and technology and a professional career at the forefront of tech, with all its hubris of the ever new, he is intrigued to discover the writings and places, architecture and art of civilizations long gone imbued with echoes of all too familiar human passions, glories and failings. I'd now like to hand over to Anne, who will present her photo book work. Um, and just as I mentioned before, we'll have time for Q&As at the end. However, feel free to pop some questions in the chat or the Q&A function anytime during the talk. So thank you. I'll now hand over to Anne. Thanks, Anne. Uh, thanks, Lindsay. Thanks for your introduction. Um, I'm going to share my screen now and uh, hopefully, hopefully you can see that. Uh, so um, I'm sitting here in Wadawurrung country in Aries Inlet. And, uh, but in fact, my story began, uh, or the shape of my photograph book project began in Badua Alice Springs. So uh, as well as acknowledging um, the country of the Wadawurrung, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the country of the Aranda people and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Um, they've been a part um, of my project since the beginning. So in terms of shape of a project, that's a little bit part of it. Okay, so here we are. Um, I was in, and my project goes back to the beginning uh, in 2018. So I'd, just to make sense of it, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the background. So I was, uh, I went back to Alice Springs in 2018 to visit friends. 
And while I was there, I, um, I was doing a lot of walking and uh, eventually a lot of walking in the subdivision of Old East Side, uh, where this photo was taken, and a lot of walking up and down the laneways. So in terms of shape, these laneways and the bounding corrugated iron fences um, played a big part of that. As I took photos, I started researching the history of the area and I wrote poetry um, to sort of as a way of, well, a sort of a diary poetry as a way of kind of thinking about what I was doing and keeping a record about that. So I'm going to start with a little bit of that. Old East Side, subdivided, leased and fenced. Todd River Flats now inside and out. Laneways shape new liminal space, parallel walls or collage of corrugations. The laneways of Old East Side don't follow the tracks of the Mbandwa Arunda people. Rear fences exhibit arcs and marks accidentally curated a backspace retrospective. Sunlight powers an ever-changing projection, a masterclass in shadow and abstraction. And so it was after, um, after about a year working on this in the middle of 2019, I held a studio exhibition and uh, this image shows, um, uh, is an installation shot. Um, and I, what I had done was to, with the photographs, I had them printed on really crappy paper at about at the same size as corrugated iron panels, about one by two meters. And I glued them onto the corrugated iron fence and created sort of this maze-like um, installation. My goal was to try and recreate the, the sense of being in the laneway and of being outside the fence. Uh, in one part of the installation, there was a projection and I also made a little um, booklet or reader catalogue um, kind of thing, uh, which included some of the poetry and some quotes from uh, people who'd influenced my work as I was working. Then last year, as you all know, we ended up in lockdown and I found myself behind the fence and I thought to myself, okay, what am I going to do? And over the years, I've been making a collection of books about making books. And I thought, right, this is my big chance. I'm going to develop my skills. I'm going to make a bunch of handmade books. Um, and so then I had to think about what materials that I'd use. And what I realised was that I could use um, the experimental photographs um, that I'd printed while I was working on the fence project and so a lot of the old uh, large papers. And so this became the materials for my project. And what I'm going to do now is show you a few of those, um, a few of the books that I made. So really, I just started with single pages and simple folds. This is um, this um, this book's just made from a large sheet of paper folded um, uh, so that you can. It's actually called a Franklin fold, and you can see that both the covers and the on the outside and the inside allowed me to make little inserts where I put the title and a and a poem. Uh, this one's actually a blizzard fold. In this one, I'd used, say, 150 GSM brown paper. And in each of the inserts, there's one on each page, um, I used um, 300 GSM uh, photographic rag um, to put in some photos that I'd printed. This one's also a blizzard fold. And this one's interesting because it's got two concertinas. One concertina's made by making the fold and it creates this really gorgeous spine and the covers. And then inside another concertina, which is sort of a collage of a few different um, photos of fences and that they sort of get clipped in by the blizzard fold. This one here is a very large sheet of paper. 
it's um, made, you cut three cuts into the paper at certain places and then fold it concertina wise. And it turns into, uh, into, into this uh, pretty neat kind of book. It's got some sections that open in a different orientation. And for this one, I started using um, stitching and stitched in some little, uh, you can see them in the centre there most clearly, um, some new signatures into the book as well. Uh, this one here, also including stitching, is a Japanese stab binding. And uh, you can see that there's a concertina of one of the photographs of fences with a, a uh, cover wrapped around it and then stitched with this very simple um, stab binding. This one also has got stab binding. And what I was, um, I didn't say this about the other things, but while I, as I was making these, I was thinking they're books, but they're also sculptures. And I was really thinking about, you know, the, the parallels between fences and the books that I was making. This one here is a very long concertina. It's probably about two metres long. And here I started to use hard covers. So there's a hard cover at each end. Um, the concertina is actually made up of individual photographs uh, connected at the back spine. And you can see that I've put the ribbons in so that you can actually tie it at both the spine and the fore edge. Uh, here again, these ones are more book-like, um, but they do have concertinas, especially the two back ones have got concertinas in, in them. Um, I printed on the back of some of the pages with the subdivision. You probably have seen that reoccur in a few of the images and uh, also tried a bit of perfect binding here. Uh, this one here is sculptural again. We're using photos attached to card and then attached to hard cover edges. Um, again, stitched to hold the, the double concertina together. This one here is a, uh, a DOS a DOS book. Um, it's got uh, um, the book binding fabric on the spines and paper, but hardcover, um, paper covered hardcovers. And the, what's unusual about this one is the back cover of the two separate books is shared. So that you've, it's almost like having two books in one. It's a pretty good option if you've got say two different stories that you want to tell that might be connected. And over, um, I've, I've been saying uh, over a hundred days, I made a hundred different books. Of course, you know, sometimes I made two a day, sometimes they stretched out. But I realized when I got to this point that they'd made, that together they made a really substantial and interesting comp contribution to my fence project. And that brings me into this year when I had the great good fortune to go to Alice Springs and to take all of this work um, in my first uh, solo exhibition uh, at Central Craft in Alice Springs, which is part of the arts, the Araluan Arts Complex. You can see I've got a few of the panels on the, out, on the veranda at the outside of the building. Um, inside um, some of the panels, um, again, in a different kind of way to the original exhibition, um, the panels, you know, giving that sense of, um, of the fences of the laneways. Um, uh, on the right-hand side image of the installation, you can see there's a slit in the fence. And on the other side, if you looked through the slit in the fence, you could see a projection that, um, I had a projection using four projectors, um, with, uh, which so it was a constantly moving image of the fences projected onto corrugated iron. And of course, in the end, a um, hundred small books um, that brought a different dimension there. I think I just want to finish off by saying that. Um, you know, in, talk, in talking about the shape of this project, there's a whole lot of things that have been really significant. And just really quickly, we can maybe talk about some of these things more if anybody's interested, but certainly time, um, both historical time and the, and the time from the beginning of this project 
through to this culminating ex ex uh, exhibition were significant. Place was also a really um, significant part in shaping the project. Obviously, the history and my thinking about, um, you know, the, about the country, about Aranda country, and then about the subdivision, and then about, you know, the current usage of the land. My experience of being in that place, um, both, you know, physical and emotional. I think the, um, the opportunities I had and the technical decisions I made and, of course, all of the interactions with people along the way which led me one way or another. I think that, um, and, of course, you know, the research and that sort of thing. I think that um, each, of, each of these, the different things I was able to do and the relationship between these books and the rest of the project have been really significant for me. So thanks very much, and I'm going to now I'm going to pass over. I'm going to stop sharing this screen here, and I'm going to pass over. Um, let me have a look. I'm going to pass over to Mike. Mike, over to you. The host has stopped my video. Try now, Mike. Yeah. Here I am. They're all there. Okay. Um, uh, good morning. And uh, I'm glad you didn't go to church today because you're uh, watching us. <laughs> now I'll start to share. Um, uh, oh, no, I've got to share screen. Hang on. Sorry, I'm actually. It's sharing, Mike. You just need to pop it on full screen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Oh, good. Uh, I'm, I'm new to this technology. How's that? That's great. Okay. Now, here we go. How to make a photo, or how I make a photo book. Um, so, mostly. It takes a long time. I mean, sure, there's there's short ways, long ways, but depending on your subject, the the book I'm working on now and the one I did recently in an exhibition called Three Thousand Streets was a culmination of ten years of work um, of collecting. I, I am a rabid, avid collector. I love books and uh, you know all sorts of things. Of you know from collecting, um, you know, swizzle sticks, <laughs> stamps, you know, all those sorts of things. You know, it's, it's uh, topology is a, is a great thing. Um, and uh, it, it stops, you know, boredom, uh, collecting things. Uh, it's, and if you've got your camera with you, you know, you're never bored. So how do you start a book? Um, well, you start, looking, reading. Uh, my first book I ever bought was Suburbia by Bill Owens, and like in 1977. Um, and of course, there is the Americans, Family of Man by Steichen, uh, and uh, Martin Parr. I mean, he's a prolific bookmaker. You should study him. Uh, and I've got several of his books. Uh, I think he's made over 40 books in his lifetime. He's just amazing he's got his um uh archive set up somewhere in um in england and uh, people have been sending him books and he's been collecting books so now he's given all his books to the the public um but uh the book a book is a binding of your ideas a project a journey or, or fun or exploration it can be really anything it could be your memories it could be you know even make an a to z um it could be a family i mean but it's 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 
storytelling. Um, it, it's everything has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And coming from my film days, um, you know, I was influenced by a lot of directors and uh, being an editor, I was in a backroom boy, putting them all together and trying to make stories, you know. So you start off with a, 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 a big picture and, uh, you know, a big wide shot and then go into the blah, 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 into the action. And, uh, but you always ended up with the, uh, a beautiful sunset shot, perhaps as the cowboy rides into the sun. But always an uplifting moment. So, and and that's the way I I treat books. Um, this particular book, I'm I'm working on three books at the moment. One's called Emotions. One's called um, Abandon, which I'm in collaboration with um, William Stewart, Bill, and um, which is really good. Uh, and I'm influenced by a book, uh, a guy called T. J. Cole who's a brilliant uh, uh, writer and, and a photographer. He wrote for the New York Times and certainly uh, one to watch. And, you know, you think you've got some pictures and you can write the way he puts pictures and words together, not just a picture book. I really think that picture, uh, words need to be put with pictures. Uh, I mean, if a picture without words is art, I mean, I think sometimes words help the viewer. I mean, I disagree with someone like Bill Henson who, who untitles all his work. I, I think, you know, a, a title is a, is a color, uh, you know, another color to the palette and helps the viewer. He, a viewer doesn't really understand your mind sometimes because um, I'm, I'm a bit strange anyway, and I sort of have to help people. <laughs> sort of tune into my uh, narrow vision. Anyway, so as I said, look around um, uh, and there are compediums that, um, you know, there's the three books by Martin Parr, the history of the photo book, Magnum photo book. Um, there's an inside to one of the, um, the photo book uh, volume set. Um, but the good thing is to, you know, pick a book that you like or, you know, feel them. You know, I, I mean, I make books to uh, how, that I could hold in my hand. I also uh, make photographs for the wall in a size that I can hold in the hand. I find that books and photographs are very personal. Um, so um, from that point of view um uh when you come to uh start to make a book you know you, it's good to get to know you know how the, the the book is made and and that enables you to um understand uh you know cost you know do you want to uh i mean at the moment i'm i'm thinking of um this clear acetate on the front and back of course the you know, the printer forgot the back cover. I, I think it should be tactile and both covers should be uh, acetate or clear celluloid. Um, you know, I, I also look at um, books as films. There, there's, as I said before, it, it's sort of like an intro, the curtain rises, you know, the anticipation, there's the, the, the prelude, the music, you know, the pages as you turn, you're in, anticipation you're settling down with your popcorn or in your seat ready to um, read the book and flip it slowly and and you know i mean that's what i want that that, that experience and uh, this particular book that i'm working on now called uh, missing letters uh, i'd been shooting that for you know uh you know as i as i go around i have a, a set of keywords um in my brain, probably about uh, 200 uh, or more. And as I pass the street, uh, you know, there might be three or four different keywords I come upon, you know, rubbish bins, uh, signs, uh, cracks. Um, I, I don't know, there's lots of, anyway, when you come back, it, it, it's usually anything that interests me or catches my eye, I shoot it. And then when I come back, I flag them 
flag the shots that I like and then add keywords to those so I can come back and find them later. So as I said, these keywords, and you can see here, this is part of my, my um, workflow. I use Lightroom because it interfaces with Adobe Photoshop. I'm not a great Photoshop uh, artist. Um, I, I, I like Lightroom, it's simple. People like Elements for that reason too. I do a lot of my global work with um, uh, Lightroom. Uh, global meaning I, I, I just do uh, changes in darkening, lightening, but no real dodging and burning like my old darkroom days. But I do that fine work in, in Photoshop. But generally these cameras today, like the iPhone and everything, the algorithms are like just brilliant. Um, you know, the, you know, uh, you know, iPhone 13 is like you could make fab fabulous books and it's in raw and uh, you know, hey ho. So as you see on the right there, you know, I've got milk bar, milk crate, milk crates, uh, milk delivery, minder, mini, mirror, mirrors, mismatch, missing foot. I've got shots of miss one, three shots of missing feet, feet, missing hand one, missing letters. I've got 331, misspelt words, 20, uh, missed, mixer, mobile. So as I said, that's my keyword list. So um, as I'm working on, uh, on this, I start to use um, Officeworks, my, my go-to printer for the first phase that after I've, I've, I've put into from my 331 shots, I make up a collection of about a hundred possible. So, you know, so I'm editing them down to a hundred. And so then I make up a concept. Uh, and so I draw it up uh, and you can see I've developed, got an idea of clear cell on the front with the letters. And, and as you close, as the book's closed, it says missing letters. And when it opens out, you see the title missing letters with the titles missing. So here's a couple of shots that I've found, four shots. Um, uh, one's New Zealand, one's Albert Park, another one's somewhere in Brunswick and uh, somewhere else. So as a, and these are taken over, you know, five or six years, these. Um, so it, it also helps to send a mock-up because you might be saying, well, how much is this going to cost? Well, this particular book here, which you see with um, 70 pages, um, 100 copies, $4,000. Um, so that's just plain paper ring wiro binding, which people, some one of my old friends, um, he said, oh, that's really old and, you know, but I like it. I mean, in the 20s, it was the go-to binding, this uh, wire binding that's now on all the, the cheap um, diaries and stuff but anyway I, I like it it's retro anyway um, so the next stage is to sequence your shots this is like working out the beginning middle and end and so I lay it out first I get the, the 10 cent shots from office works lay them all out put them all out on the thing to, and start to work on the sequence and from that sequence it helps also to um, you know, check the grading. Like the other day, I was uh, putting it up, and I said, "Oh shit, there's a excuse me, um, there, there's a link between that shot and that shot. If I increase the yellow in the uh, the, the the line, I I can get a flow between one to the other. So that's what helps. So this is in my studio, and um, I've laid them all out along the wall, and and. I don't know whether you can see, but I'm starting to pair up yellow and getting flow through that. But I'd, I'd worked out that I knew I had this book done when I found the, the, the end shot. And I went, oh, my God. And I don't know, you, you just have this epiphany or this major moment like an orgasm. So sorry. Um, and uh, yes, I've got it. So that's why I'm. I'm often running with this book because I have the best ending. Um, that you, you, uh, you wouldn't believe it. I can't tell you because that you have to buy the book. Um, anyway, uh, these are um, 
I stick them the book also. The next stage is bring them down off the wall. I go around to Office Works, and I'm going to one of the bottom left the the Spira uh, Wiro ring uh, books, their diaries. I, I just stick them into that. As you see, my last exhibition there on the right bottom right, um, you can see some numbers thirty three. I'm working at the pages and and and. It, they're just stuck on with double-sided, so I can pull them in and pull them out. The other one was um, uh, what I started off up the top left was the first one was I bought a little uh, handy book for, you know, $5 at Officeworks and uh, I got 10 cent prints and for a cost of $8, I made those handmade books and sold them for $25. So look, you know, you can use any material. You can use, you know, uh, you know, get some paper, print on the paper. If you're not worried about the quality, you know, in terms of, um, well, you can worry about quality by buying a printer that will, can handle the paper and the paper weight and so on and so forth. And just make a couple of holes and then push a staple through and then fold it and hey, you've got a book, you know, I mean, it's not rocket science, it's just doing it, you know. So these are some of my books that I've done. Um, uh, Our Future was a book on uh, Gina Reinhardt's poem. I did that in 2012. I had to shoot in a week and make a book, which I did uh, working with Trent, Trent Park. I can uh, wholly recommend uh, immersing yourself into a workshop and from that you can make a book. And that also means that you have to get an end shot. You know, I mean, look, you can make a book and just for the experience, but if you want to make it sort of worthwhile, you know, it's that beginning, middle and end. Um, Shrouds, I, I, I learnt about this, um, and Shrouds is a book that took me another 20 years. I started in 1994 with a, a covered thing, and I started off, and it evolved over time from uh, Christo, um, that the guy who wrapped the Reichstag and other things, and it, it, it flowed on, and, 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 and the project changed until it came down to uh, I covered cars. And so after going to a workshop in actually one of the, the first Ballarat Biennales, they had a blurb of book show, I forget, a guy called Tan from Sydney. He explained you could start to work with a book. And I, what I did there is made my own covers uh, and, and put the book in the cover. So that, that blue tarpaulin, uh, I, I, I personalised the book that came from uh, Mag Cloud, I, I bought that from um, from America. There was HP Mad Cloud was the the company. Our future was done by Blurb. That's so expensive. I mean, my our future cost me one hundred and sixty dollars just for one copy. So, you know, depend. You got to work out how many copies you want to. As you know, we've said before, you want to keep under the bed and. With three thousand streets and in Terror Bang, my last two books, um, you know, I've still got a few copies. But Melbourne Photo Book Collective is getting together its own um, um, shopping or shop, and uh, you'll be able to buy them from there. In Terror Bang was great, um, and and three thousand streets. Uh, I used a, a guy, a Stan, a Stan Jaren. Uh, to put it together. And I always, because of working in film, I, I love to work collaboratively. I like people's ideas. I like um, sharing them. And, and I, I get a buzz out of other people looking at my work. And I think it's Im- important to uh, show a few trusted people. I mean, in Terrabang, I had, as you noticed before, there was that question mark, if you can remember it. Well, I didn't realise, but Stan gave me this great idea which is and called it Interrobang, which is Mike, uh, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm gonna to have to get you to start wrapping up because we're running out of time. Okay, okay. Okay. Well that's that's that. And I just want to leave you with an idea. Three quick shots of where you could actually go for your next book by this woman called Colette Fu. 
which she's made a huge uh, uh, pop-up book. Uh, so that's quite amazing. But there is, you know, look, Google it. It's on, it's on YouTube, how to make a, a pop-up book. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll just hand it over to Stuart now, thanks. Yep. Apologies, folks. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lindsay, Anne, and Mike. Um, the, the Shape of a Photo Project, it's a, it's a really interesting question, and, and thanks again to Anne for uh, proposing that. My most uh, recent book is a DIY style uh, book of tipped in photographs. Ideas for books don't come easily to me, nor do they uh, arise from singular aha moments. Their creation often come from an idea or an experience, however small and incons inconsequential. Most of the ideas toss and turn on my head for some time before I sit down and actively look for pictures to include. Uh, rarely do I make pictures with a book in mind, that is until recently anyway. Um, a little bit of background, if I may. Uh, I've been a practicing artist since uh, 1987. My interest in photo book making was sparked by exposure to photo books at college in the late 1980s and was kicked up a notch in the mid 1990s when I realized if I learned a program like Aldous Page Maker or Quark, I could create a polished book that looked any way I wanted. Uh, it was to take a master class with Marshall Weber and Stephen Dupont in 2015, where the Melbourne Photo Book Click first crossed paths, to get me see beyond the established codex of a photo book, and to think of a book, and to think of bookmaking in a different light. Uh, the above books span more than 12 years of experiments with the book form, and um, they're all self-published. Uh, from the polished art and mathematics to the handmade body bags and other misdemeanors. In all of these books, uh, software figured heavily in their production. My latest, however, comes from a much more craft-related perspective, nowhere near as crafty as Anne's, but much more craft-based, where uh, the use of computers was minimal. Um, like Mike, I have uh, an extensive library, and uh, there are a couple of formative books in that library that uh, tick away and get flipped out and read on occasion. And those books are the, the Book of 101 Books, Seminal photo, book, photo Books of the 20th Century, and the Photo Book, A History, Volume 1, 2, and 3. Amazon and the internet changed the way I purchased uh, books radically, which in turn feeds the, the process. And it feels to me that the photo book has undergone somewhat of a rena renaissance after the last 15 years or so. Uh, as sources of information about them are almost overwhelming. There's, there isn't any um, bookmaker or publisher who doesn't have a website, a newsletter, and an Instagram feed at a, bit, a bit minimum in the 21st century. Uh, this most recent book I've made is called Contact. As I said, it's a DIY style book of tipped in photographs. Uh, I purchased four visual diaries that were spiral bound with blank pages. And I initially imagined it as an edition of three with an artist proof. Uh, the book ended up with 26 pages in total and 26 tipped in photographs. The idea itself can be traced back to several conversations I've had in years since meeting the rest of uh, the Melbourne Photo Book Collective. Firstly, uh, uh, Stephen Dupont and I had a short discussion in the masterclass when we first crossed paths about tipping in work to uh, make. Um, a desirable object. Uh, this, this came from me showing him this box of contact sheets, which is a long running project I've been using on large format film now for uh, since, since the mid 1990s. Fast forward then to 2019, and uh, I had a discussion with a colleague at work who pointed me to a blog post by uh, a photographer in, in uh, I think he's in the UK. Uh, but called Blake Andrews, and he'd written a post about a tipped-in photo book that he made using an existing sketch pad uh, and small enlargement, enlargements from a larger pile of discarded prints he made in other darkroom sessions. 
So last, before I actually committed to this process, I had happened to uh, catch up with an old teacher from the 80s and we had coffee together and we were talking about silver gelatin paper types. And um, it, was, it was then that I realised I could use a particular type of silver gelatin paper for this tipped in photo book project. Um, so I have to thank that teacher profusely for that help. Uh, all the while I was thinking about this pro project, um, you know, history, memory in the archive is something that sort of percolates underneath all my work. Uh, I was also sorely missing my time spent outdoors with my cameras where um, my usual method of working involves looking back over contact sheets or digital files and then looking for connections between the images in a similar way to the way that um, Mike works. And if I do find these connections, then they could potentially lead to a book idea or um, an exhibition. Um, but not having had an opportunity to get out and um, make and look for new pictures, I decided I had, there was enough images in my archive to make a book. Uh, at this point, we're well into our second lockdown. Uh, I kept coming back to the idea of walking in a city with a camera something that I'd taken for granted uh, until the pandemic began. My archive itself spans more than 30 years of picture making. All up, uh, there I have more than four, 530 contact sheets, each with 12 pictures. It took several hour, several long, hour long sessions to consider them all and peppered throughout though were some images that for a variety of reasons have resonated with me for many years. These also helped the process tick over. The only selection criteria at this point for this book was that the image have enough visual strength to stand out as a small contact print. I had decided very early on to only contact print these images, which in turn drove the choice uh, of the book format, which in this case is A6. Uh, Blake's method was intriguing, but I had other ideas on how I wanted the finished object to look. Uh, my first edit yielded about 80 possible image, which I uh, very roughly print digitally which I then added down to 40, I, but still 40 images in my mind was going to be too many to uh, constitute a, a reasonable book. So I had to think uh, a little more about this, uh, but I still went ahead and printed four sets of 40 silver giant images, which you can see that there they are spread out in my darkroom as part of that process. I then pinned, uh, just like Mike, I pinned my images up on my darkroom wall. This is uh, Aperture, which I use to organise my photos. And the 40 images went down to 26. This, by the way, is the final order. And uh, as I said, Aperture is um, the tool I'm using here just for the point of this demonstration. But you can't, I can't overstress enough the fact of having um, even scale down versions of your images in a space spread out, give them time to resonate with each other and with yourself and with other people before you even commit to uh, a rough uh, book format or, or a finished format. I then spent uh, a substantial amount of time um, gluing them into four books. Uh, and at one point I realised that uh, I could actually pull the books apart using the spiral uh, binding of the book, which helped make some aspects of the production easier. Uh, and this was actually a process driven result. I hadn't thought about that before I started uh, when I got to that point, which it then made the page count uh, a little easier as I, I think I removed probably three quarters of the actual pages in the book. I think that's 60 pages in those books. Um, overall, uh, this was uh, a very satisfying uh, exercise. I'm not convinced, however, that the object achieves the look and feel that I was hoping for. In my mind, I was, it was going to be a unique yet luxurious object. I severely under, and underestimated the skill level I needed to achieve this. And Anne, and Anne, needs, Anne needs to give me some <laughs> tips on how, how to do some crafty stuff. I, I may use this technique moving forward with a different size and scale and possibly a different um, binding approach in the future. So uh, thank you everyone for coming along today. Thanks to Fiona and the Ballarat International Photo being the only for organise this event.
um, over to you, Suzanne. He says, frantically trying to stop share. And Morning, everyone. I think I'm on now. Um, can someone just acknowledge that <laughs> you can see and hear me? We can, Suzanne. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> I'd just like to firstly start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land. I'm on the land of the Wurundjeri people today. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge and pay my respects to any elders past, present and emerging. For this, um, the Shape of the Photo Book project, over the last two years, mostly in lockdown, I've created six photo books. Um, I thought I'd briefly talk about this story. Um, all but one of the photo books are collaborative projects and involve large numbers of people. The first two uh, photo books were isolation portraits, one and two, um, where I created um, uh, portrait, portraits of people in their, um, at their houses or on their farms, uh, me outside, it was in the first stage of lockdown and I was undertaken over a couple of months. Uh, what was, each person was also, or each family and individual was asked to write um, and talk about their isolation experience also. I thought I had five minutes, so hopefully I'll get through this quite quickly and make up some time along the way. Um, sorry, I just, I, I did the book design for these photo books. It was really uh, key for me that I did all of the work and I could create it all in my home. I couldn't go anywhere. So um, they're very rudimentary and they um, sort of, uh, part of it was around where I live in Warburton and Upper Yarra Valley, there's a lot of black and white imagery and I was quite keen to recreate or um, that um, essence of a lot of textbook styles that I really, I really was going for that look. This project unprecedented um, is the only one that was not collaborative other than I guess with my partner who I was living with or am living <laughs> with still. Um, it's a collection of diptychs and triptychs alongside quotes from politicians during the time. It um, features evidence of panic buying and community COVID projects and scenes from life and daily walks. Um, in earlier this year, I released um, International Women's Day, which is a collection of portraits that I've created over the last 10 years um, of cis and trans women, non-binary and gender diverse people who have answered the question, what does International Women's Day mean to me? It includes over 80 portraits and each person was asked to respond to what International Women's Day meant to them or means to them. And in 2021, I hadn't, didn't create any new portraits because we were in lockdown and I didn't want to do it virtually. Um, so people were asked again to um, respond for the current year and how things were different from them. This portrait of Amy Taylor has also um, been selected in the Martin Cantor uh, portrait prize so hopefully I can get to see that at some point. The other projects series that I've worked on is called Artists in Residence and there are now two series of that. The first one was created in August to uh, October 2020. I created virtual portraits with over with 53 artists who are in lockdown in Melbourne. Uh, the, per the portraits are then, I did those over Zoom sessions just like this and uh, felt a bit crazy. Um, it was a bit weird, but it uh, was the only way I could get to see a lot of my friends and creative circle and have conversations. Um, and in the end, the portraits, um, yeah, I think they're different, but they, they're still portraits and it's just a new way of doing things. Um, the portraits were then given to each artist and they were asked to create something further with them. Uh, so people would, this is Karen from Finance, who then digitally modified, um, created their own portrait. And the, so the work on the left is, or my left, is um, the virtual portrait and the artwork on the right is their finished artwork. Um, some created illustrations, some hand sewed onto the, onto the image um, or created uh, collages. And, and I think Adar is a, Good example who uh, digitally modified the image 
printed it, screwed it up in a ball, planted it in a pot plan, watered it for a week, took it out, dried it out with a hairdryer, then took a photo and that's the finished piece. Uh, all the, um, again, all the artists were asked to contribute a written piece and also they talked about uh, their creative process to create their finished artwork. Uh, in August this year, um, I found that we we're in our exactly the same position again. Um, I'm now in lockdown six, which we're still in, and I asked all the artists again if they wanted to create collaboratively um, for another series. Um, 22 of those artists said yes, and I created a few virtual portraits, but I also took a different, slightly different approach, which was to ask artists to contribute something they had created over the last 12 months, whether it was in lockdown or something they'd managed to create when we were back in life a bit no more normally. Um, and again, asked to contribute um, a written piece to go alongside it. So these are the Huxleys. Uh, this is Carly Oldest, who, as she says, is there's a the, her virtual portrait is of a virtual portrait of the virtual portrait we look talk of her last time um this is the first time so for this piece this uh, uh, photo book um it's the first time we've engaged a photo um someone to do photo book design sorry which is tom with the pole he's a friend of mine a long-term collaborator um and it's also i've taken transitioned so I just want to say this beautiful artwork from Renata, who's on this call, I can see. Um, and first time I tried to transition to call myself an, the editor of the, the photo book and release it under um, Photos Punctuate My Life publication. That is my final slide. Um, the goals, I, I thought I'd just touch on the goals for me is, or what drives me to create these photo books is to just make it do it for myself, make what I can with my own skills and what I have at hand, ask people for help as well though. Um, and people are super generous in, um, yeah, collaborating with me and providing feedback. Make it during the time, not retrospectively is important for me and documentation, um, collaboration, uh, provide an opportunity for people's voices to be heard and, words and photos together I, I think through all of these it's seen i seen that that's clearly uh something that I, I i pursue um that is all for me um thank you so much and i will introduce to william steward now and stop sharing my screen thank you very much uh, can people hear me yes i'm going to go ahead we sure can william so all good Okay, good, thank you. So I'm going to talk about the mechanics of uh, doing uh, photo books and wrestling with some of the ideas of formats and, and how we eventually ended up with the book that I'll show you at the end of the presentation, which is called Abandoned, uh, Au Pet de Vue. Au Pet de Vue is a small village in Provence and there's quite a horrific and interesting story that surrounds that village which the book tells. So one of the things as a self-publishing photographer, author, um, that I always wrestle with is uh, formats, um, particularly formats that don't require vast quantities of stock but can still be ordered and um, distributed to people who want to buy the books. You've got offset printing, you've got digital printing, uh, but all of these things, uh, if you do it any sort of quantity, require stock on hand, usually in your garage or under your bed or whatever. And that doesn't really work for me because I travel and live in a suitcase. So on-demand printing was the solution for me, but this has several issues that are of a concern. To me, one is uh, the cost. You can get very good quality uh, on-demand printing, but as you might have heard Mike talk about, the cost is often more than what you would be prepared to pay for the book. So that's a very serious issue. Sometimes the quality of on-demand is, is a bit uh, underwhelming. Sometimes it's really extraordinary. And if you can... 
you know, looking at different providers, they provide you with different um, uh, quality solutions. And then you've got scalability. You've got, to, if you start to sell a few books and you're doing an open edition, uh, on-demand printing may have scalable problems, particularly in terms of, um, of uh, doing large numbers of, of uh, printing. So these were the problems. What I ended up with is going into something that's uh, becoming, I think, quite popular for a lot of people, and that's a kind of a zine format. And what we decided that we would end up at is to look at the cost of the production, about 50% of what we would sell the book for. So this would be affordable in small quantities. If we did larger quantities, we could get discounts and that margin would increase. But that would allow us to cover the costs of the website and any kind of events and things like that so that we're not actually losing money by doing the book rather than um, making some money. We also wanted to look at quality of the book. Is it consistent if you order a book in three months time, does it look the same as it did uh, when you got the first copy? And this can be a huge problem with on-demand printing services. So that's something we were very careful to look at. And at the end of the day, we wanted to produce a, a book in a zine format that was uh, of a price that was uh, going to be affordable um, and would encourage impulse buying. And we figured out somewhere around three cups of coffee is about the price that people would just go, yes, this is lovely, I'm gonna buy it. Um, and the other thing that a zine is really good for, I think, and it's part of what we see day to day with magazines everywhere, is that a zine is sort of got this sense of a series. It's not just one thing, but it's um, a series, a weekly, a monthly, whatever it is. And for us, we uh, went to a um, abandoned uh, concept as a series and we are inviting and, and interested to have uh, interest from others for photographers and authors to actually do books in this series. It's meant to be very open and not just something for me to do. There's a company we formed around it. We've been looking at company identities like fonts and colors, which is what you're seeing in the slides here. Um, and for us, the series is a conceptual series around the concept of being abandoned and, and the zine very nicely as well. The layout that we've done for the, the book is designed to support combinations of pictures and text, but there really is a strong emphasis on photographs, on the imagery. Um, these are essentially photo books. They're not sort of textual books with a couple of pictures. So what does it look like? Here's a, uh, an image of the cover. Uh, you can, uh, so the size, sorry, is a sort of a truncated A4. So it's just the width of A4, just a little bit uh, a truncated height. You can see the author's name there, that the cover picture is, is uh, from the book. Um, and abandoned will be, that sort of color bar will be a feature across uh, all of the um, books in the abandoned series. The books are combination of image and text. This is a, a vertical layout of the image. Uh, this is a horizontal layout of the image. You can see the text filling up the pages here, but you may have pages that are without any text at all. Uh, and they may just be a, 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 an image on either side of, uh, of, the, of the spread. Um, or you may end up with, uh, in this case, full page uh, image and text with captions as well. There's a full page image format, and we are actually anticipating that there'll be some uh, books that are just primarily images rather than uh, a lot of uh, text interleaved with the imagery. Um, the zine format is printed on a folded sheet. Uh, so it's uh, one larger sheet folded in half, it's bound by staples. We looked at printing across the fold and that doesn't really work. So all of the format decisions are based on uh, printing um, on single pages only. But the exception to that is that the center pages are actually printed on a single sheet and you can get a centerfold. And in our case, the centerfold is 
a featured image about the um, the uh, you know about, that the book is about that you want to sort of highlight, and I think it's a very nice feature that we'll we'll support in each um, in each book. So what does this actually look like? I'm going to um, uh, stop sharing and come back to. Um, I hope you can see me. Um, so uh, here's the what the book actually looks like. Um, that's the cover that you saw there. Um, there's the centerfold. Uh, you can see um, this is sort of a, a spread where you've got a vertical and a horizontal picture. In this book, these are all three by two images, but we're looking at books with other formats that may not be three by two, they could be four by five, four by three. And we have rules in the layouts that will uh, accommodate those kind of uh, uh, things you've got. In this case, sort of books, uh, text on one side, text on another. So it's, it's, I think it's a very flexible kind of layout. Um, I'm not really talking about the content of the book, but um, maybe I'll just say a couple of words and then I'm finished. The book is um, about a village in the south of France that was entwined in some rather kind of horrific events in Provence around uh, persecution and heresy and things like this. And the picture is very similar to Mike and uh, Stuart for me was laying them out, figuring out the order. It was many years of, of photographs of visiting this area. So anyway, I should wrap up because we're running short of time and thank you very much for attending. And let's back to Lindsay. Thanks, William. Um, so we, we are a bit short on time, unfortunately. So I don't think there's a lot of time for questions, but if all the panelists would like to come back on, I thought maybe I'd just choose one um, question for us to have a quick chat about, which is what has been the most rewarding aspect of self-publishing? So if anyone would like to have a go at that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I couldn't imagine really doing it any other way. You, you, uh, you're involved in the entire process from conception to uh, final production and you, you get exactly what you set out to achieve. For me, can't speak for anyone else. It's my baby, <laughs> as you said, conception to delivery. Uh, <laughs> it's wonderful. and and. I think the biggest thing is that I've got now something that will outlast me. I mean, uh, I've put a marker down. If anyone's seen that film called Badlands, I, I, that's a lot old, old, old film. He makes a mark and that's the only thing that's going to be left. And I find the only thing was I've got four books in the National Library now, so I'm happy. <laughs> Thank you. I just say I love social media and it's got lots of positives, but it can disappear at any moment. So having a book, it, it, it lives on. Yeah, I would, I would echo that too. I love the result at the end of the day that you end up with something physical and material and substantial. And I think that's really important. And it's, it's confining too, because you've got very strong limitations on on the, the format and it's just, uh, I, I think it's a lovely way to do it. And of course, when you self-publish, you have the control that you want, I think. So. I think it, um, as well as it being confining to me, the, the um, idea of self-publishing, it opens the possibilities. So when you, like, if you look at uh, us, you know, we operate as a group, but you know, the, the range of the work, I love just looking at what everybody talked about today. Um, you know, it's funny in these sort of scenarios, you get to, you know, to see what each other's doing, sometimes in more detail than you do usually. And it's just spectacular, all the different work that everybody's doing. And I've loved listening to you all. So <laughs> it's been great. Thanks, Anna.
Thank you all so much. I mean, it's been such in, um, informative, inspiring presentations that you've all created and just to see the diversity um, of the projects and also for some of you particularly pro the prolific nature of it. So congratulations and thank you all so much for speaking today and sharing, being so generous with sharing your work and your ideas and processes with everybody. So I think we are going to have to wrap it up, unfortunately. I'm sorry there wasn't a lot of time for questions. Um, but I'd like to invite um, all of you to join our last talk to, for the Photo Book Weekend, which starts at 12 o'clock today. And that's um, Rainbow, Families, Rainbow Families Photo Book as Contemporary Family Archive with Isabella Capizio and Mia Marla McDonald. Um, you can register via the website. So all of our talks will be recorded um, for the Photo Book Weekend. They'll be made accessible following the event and we'll be... Um, you'll be able to access those via uh, our website and we'll be updating everyone when they're ready to be viewed. And for those who are wishing to visit the Biennale in person, um, the festival is now being extended until the 9th of January 2022 and you can purchase tickets through the website and, you know, we're hoping to welcome you to Ballarat very soon. And thank you all so much for joining us today. It's great to see, a, you know, a wonderful number of people um, joining in, tuning in. So thank you and hope to see you shortly at our next talk and our final talk for the weekend. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thank Cindy. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.